guys Dave here, this is my channel Dave Rides again. If you're new here, hello and welcome. If you're an existing subscriber, great to see you back. Back in Spain after doing the Miyoto 312. I'm not gonna lie, the last couple of days have been a bit of a challenge. Just been feeling a bit run down, a bit fatigued, and overall just been knackered from doing the events. To add to this, the weather hasn't been great. We've had a little bit of rain, but as you can see behind me, blue skies have returned and the big ball of fire is burned bright in the sky. So, the kicks out my riding, perfect conditions to do an epic. I've had this route in mind for a while, it takes in not one, two of the region's most infamous climbs, which are both featured in recent editions of the World of España. Today, we're gonna to be hitting up the Balcon de Alicante and the Chiretta Cati in one run. Those sweet, smooth Spanish roads are calling, so let's get into it. Absolutely beautiful day to be out riding the bike in Spain. Mark's out, and like me, he's still shaking off his 312 hangover. So the plan is just to do this ride nice and steady. Today's route takes us inland towards Agost over the climb of Maimo. When we get up there, that's when we roll onto the first of the two big climbs for a day, the Balcon de Alicante. Okay, so we're now 50k in the ride, done just over two hours, just riding nice and steady. Legs still feel a bit empty from the 312, but we're gonna do these two climbs regardless, see how we get on. Definitely won't be the fastest times in the world. Mark turned back, didn't fancy it, so it looks like I'm doing this one solo. Balcon to Alicante isn't the longest climb in the world, 3.9%, but with an average gradient of 9.7 and pitches of around 18%, definitely one that's going to test the legs. The world that I last went up this climb in 2021, it was a stage that I was lucky enough to be on the roadside to watch and Michael Storer won that day. Take off a few rolling kilometers over the top of Maimo before turning left onto the balcon. I've included some telemetry on the footage of the two climbs. Now, I'm more about sharing the experience and vibe of an area or a climb than being too stats focused, but I felt the telemetry did help convey the demand involved with each climb, so I kept it in there. Just a quick mention, the telemetry does jam up once or twice on each climb. New software, I'm just getting a grip with it, I'm not sure why it does this. But I still felt it added value, so I kept it in. The first part of the Balcon is tough but manageable. Then, as the road bears left, you hit with a 23% wall of steep twists and switchbacks.
over the top and we roll briefly downhill towards the viewing point. It's fair to say the vista on offer is pretty incredible. How's that for a view? Water location. Climb itself was pretty tough. Long stretches where the gradient of my garment was reading over 20%. And I found out pretty quickly at the bottom that I definitely didn't have the legs to test myself up there today. All that effort was definitely worth it for this. Now we're gonna have a steady roll back down the climb and then roll nice and steady towards Castaya, where we'll start the next climb at Chiret de Cati. The balcony is an out and back climb, so we'll ride back down the road we've just come up. As I said already, my legs aren't feeling too good, and at this point, I'm already thinking about the Chiret and the suffering that's to come. Just as we're about to hit the climb of Chiret de Cadi, I thought I'd just stop and give you a few stats and a bit of history on this one. The Chiret was last used in the Vuelta a España last year, and that stage was won by none other than Mr. Primus Roglic. It's a similar length to Balcon de Alicant, but an average gradient of 12.5% and pitches at over 20%. It's another absolute killer. I've done it twice before, it broke me on both occasions. Let's see how we get out of there. Chiret has a long history with cycling in this part of Spain. It made his first appearance in La Vuelta in 1998 and has featured seven times since then. Past winners include Jose Maria Jimenez, Julian Alaphilippe and Primus Roglic. similar to the Balcon, although it does have a slightly higher average gradient and it also lacks the hairpins which break up the Balcon just that little bit. As a result, the Chiret definitely feels like the harder climb.
fair to say the views on the top of Chiray don't quite match those on offer on the balcon. So I roll straight over the top onto a fast section of the road before dropping down to the next town of Petrera. Okay, so I've just dropped down to the next town of Petrera, stopped for a few essentials, Fanta Naranja, Snickers Ghana, and two packs of Haribo's. Three hours into the ride, it's probably going to be another three hours home, so it's going to be a big one, especially after doing the 312 only four days ago. I'm going to sign out now guys, hope you've enjoyed this little look around what I would class as the ultimate playground for road cyclists. Two phenomenal climbs, both within 80k of my base in Santa Paula. Great roads, beautiful scenery, what more could you want? The ride all told is going to be somewhere around 150-160k, so it's a big deal on the bike. If you're coming here and you fancy giving it a crack, check out my Strava file, I'll be sure to link that in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video guys, as always, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video, any questions or comments on this ride, fire them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. My name's Dave, this is my channel Dave Rides Again, I'm nothing special, just a mammal on a mission. I'll catch you next time.